Hello, welcome to another Immersion Youth Message. In honor of Black History Month, let me introduce you to Sydney L. Portier. Sydney Portier was a Bahamian American actor, director, and producer. He was born in February of 1927, and he died last year, 2022, on January 6th. That means on tomorrow, February 20th, Sidney Portier would have celebrated his 96th birthday. Why is he considered Black history? Sidney Portier was the first Black actor to receive both a Golden Globe Award and an American Academy Award. His history is deep, it's extensive, and it is powerful, as are his numerous movies, films, and shows. The year 1967, long time ago for you guys, but it saw the release of three of Sidney Poitier's most celebrated films. One was To Sir With Love. The second one was In the Heat of the Night. And the third one was Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. Now, in 2005, there was a loose remake of Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, and that was starred by Bernie Mac. I share all of this with you this morning because number one, it's Black History Month, and number two, this provides the best backdrop for our Life of Jesus message today. You see, long before Sidney Poitier, long before Bernie Mac, a man named Jesus made his debut appearance as a rabbi in the Jewish depiction of Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. You can find the storyline in the Bible in the book of Luke chapter 19, verses one through seven. Let's read that. Jesus entered Jericho and made his way through the town. There was a man there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector in the region and he had become very rich. He tried to get a look at Jesus, but he was too short to see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree beside the road, for Jesus was going to pass by that way. When Jesus came by, he looked up at Zacchaeus and called him by name. Zacchaeus, he said, quick, come down. I must be a guest in your home today. Zacchaeus quickly climbed down and, and took Jesus to his house in great excitement and joy. But the people were displeased. He has gone to be the guest of a notorious sinner, they grumbled. On today, our message is entitled, Guess Who's Coming to Dinner? Guess Who's Coming to Dinner? For the purpose of my young people, we may be asking you, guess who's coming to lunch? Sidney Poitier's movie, Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, stirred a bit of controversy back then because it depicted an interracial marriage. Interracial marriages were still illegal in 17 states at that time. In our story today, we find some controversy as well, and for a different reason. Our story of Jesus today contains controversy because it depicted a rabbi sitting down to dinner with a notorious sinner. You might ask, why is that controversy? Well, Zacchaeus is a Jew. He's also a tax collector. Jews did not like tax collectors. We don't like tax collectors. He worked for the Romans who sent Jews out to collect taxes from the people. The Jews resented the Romans and they definitely did not want to pay taxes to them. Zacchaeus as a tax collector was not only responsible for collecting the tax money for the Romans, but he was also responsible for earning his own wages. As a result of his job and having to earn his own wages, Zacchaeus started cheating his own fellow Jews. He started charging them extra money so that he could put it in his own pockets. So if the people owed, say, $1,200 in taxes, Zacchaeus would charge them $1,500. He would then keep the extra 300 for himself to fill his own pockets. Because of this, the people considered Zacchaeus to be a traitor. He was a sellout. He cheated his own people for the sake of the Romans. And for that, they absolutely despised him. But Jesus, Jesus on this day in front of everybody invited Zacchaeus to come down out of the sycamore fig tree and have dinner with him 
in Zacchaeus' own house. Come on down and let's have dinner. Now you can imagine the conversation of the onlookers at this point. You can imagine the talk that was going around, the gossip they shared, the tea they spilled. They said, guess who's coming to dinner? Guess who's eating at that despicable tax collecting trader's house? Guess who's going home with Zacchaeus? It's Jesus. It's that rabbi that's been going around teaching the one who calls himself the son of God, the one who has healed folks all throughout the area. This Jesus is going to the house of a notorious, money-stealing, greedy, filthy, tax-collecting sellout, Zacchaeus. That can't be right. Jesus can't be right. What in the world is going on? What is Jesus thinking? How dare he choose to go sit in the house of a tax collector? I knew he wasn't right. I knew he wasn't all he pretended to be. I knew something was wrong with Jesus. He ain't right. Instead of being a savior, looks like he needs a savior himself. He's no better than anybody else. No respectable rabbi would dare be seen in the company of a lowlife, cheating, tax collector. Not one like Zacchaeus anyway. Let's more go to his house and eat with him. This Jesus is a fake. Can I tell y'all, can I tell y'all today? This is like saying, Pastor Akabenu went to the house of a known individual struggling with prostitution, struggling with drug addiction, struggling with alcoholism, struggling with gambling. What would you think if you saw Pastor Akabenu leaving the club, leaving the ABC store, leaving the casino? What might the gossip be there? Ah, oh, suki suki, I knew, I knew that man wasn't right. I knew he wasn't a preacher. What kind of preacher is he? What is he doing in the casino? What is he doing in the club? What is he doing in the crack house? What is he doing coming out from a prostitute's house? This might be a stretch, it might be a stretch, but you get the idea. Sometimes we make judgments about people based on our experience and our standards. Jesus didn't make judgments. Jesus was inclusive of all. Instead of avoiding sinners, Jesus embraced sinners. Instead of labeling sinners, Jesus loved sinners. Instead of sentencing them to hell, Jesus showed them heaven. We can see this in many passages in the Bible. John 4 with the Samaritan woman at the well. John 8 with the woman that was caught in adultery. We can see it also in Luke 7 where the sinful woman washes washes Jesus' feet with her tears. We can see it in Luke 15 where it says tax collectors and other notorious sinners came often to listen to Jesus teach. Even in our story today, Jesus makes it plain and he makes it clear. In Luke 19, 10, in fact, he says, for the son of man came to seek and save those who are lost. Jesus referred to himself as the son of man. And he says, I came to receive those that are rejected. Understand this, my, my young people, understand this. Jesus wants to come to your house. Jesus wants to come to dinner. In fact, Jesus wants to come to lunch. Guess who's coming to lunch? Look around your school cafeteria. Look around your table. Who is sitting at your table? Who's right there at your table? Is it LaQuisha, who's known for being the girl every guy in the school has been with? Is it Jalen uh, with the porta potty mouth who's always effing this and GD and that? Or maybe it's Tamika or Felicia who bring more gossip to the table than the teen shade room. Is it Victor and Benji, the unashamedly openly gay couple at your school? Who's at your lunch table? And are you avoiding these folks? Are you distancing yourself from them? Are you responding to them like some of the teachers and preachers of religion who have rejected and labeled different people? Are you acting like the Pharisees and teachers of Jesus' day? Is that what you're doing? Or, or are you behaving like Jesus? Jesus wants to be at the lunch table with the very people we consider to be questionable. And if we will allow him, Jesus can be found at that table through you. You can be his eyes, you can be his hands, you can be his head, you can be his heart. You can be Jesus in your school cafeteria, during your off-campus lunch period, or anywhere else you may be engaging in a meal. All you need to do is remember this, 
Jesus came for the lost. He came for the rejected, the marginalized, the hopeless. He came for us. He came for us. And today, through us, Jesus is able to meet and speak to and through all different people. All we have to do is get out of our own self-interest and allow Jesus through us to love those who feel unlovable. You know, there are so many who are seeking, so many who are empty, who feel unworthy, who feel unlovable, who feel like outcasts, who feel judged by the church because of the way they walk, the way they talk, the way they dress, the way they act. As Christians, we have the opportunity to be Jesus to all of these people. We can invite them to dinner. We can show them love and acceptance instead of standing back and whispering and gossiping about them. We can show love. We can be the ones that say, quick, come down. I must be a guest in your house today. Guess who's coming to dinner? Guess who's coming to lunch? Jesus is coming if we allow him to come. Let's pray. God, our Father, thank you. Thank you that you want to work through us. Thank you that you want to use us. God, there's so many that we need to invite to dinner, that we need to invite to lunch, that we need to sit down with and accept them for who they are and show them the love that you have for them. God, I pray that you would speak through us, that you would use us, that you would help us to invite others who may not be like us to be a part of us that we might transform them to be more like you. Thank you for this message. Thank you for the opportunities that you are gonna put before us this week to be your hands and feet with those that need to hear your word and receive your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you for joining us. The information is on the screen. We would love for you to be a part of us here at Baptist Grove. Thank you.